Ain't no coronavirus gonna get me. Uh huh, uh huh. But I ain't got no toilet paper neither. Oh no, oh no. Oh, hey, you freaking out too? You're probably home wondering what's gonna go on in the world. Well, while I have you, let's talk about cleaning up that mortgage. But first, let me get out of these quarantine cleaning clothes first. In today's video, we're gonna answer the question, is it worth refinancing with everything that's going on with the coronavirus? Lines in the 10-year treasury to record lows are gonna drive mortgage rates lower. And Light to safety and plunging treasury yields is having a, a good effect for home buyers and those looking to refinance. Mortgage rates are now at their lowest level in history. Fears of COVID-19 are also rocking the stock markets. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell announced that interest rates will be drastically cut in one of the biggest Fed moves since the 2008 financial crisis. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Michael Anthony St. Clair, and I'm a local mortgage advisor helping people build wealth, save money on mortgage debt, and ultimately change their lives through the power of home ownership. And if you stay tuned through the video, I'm going to share with you the number one product you can have as far as mortgages go in a falling market such as the coronavirus market. As a mortgage advisor, I hear a lot of myths and a lot of fears that homeowners have when it comes to the benefits of refinancing and deciding whether to pull the trigger or not. And one of the myths that I hear is, well, I shouldn't refinance my mortgage unless I can reduce my rate by a full percent. And to that, I'll, I'll be honest, just you know, shooting to you straight, that makes no sense at all. Simply put, because interest is what a bank makes money off of. And the more in interest you're spending, the less in principle you're able to apply. In principle, as we both know, is what allows you to get out of your mortgage payment or mortgage debt sooner than later. So any opportunity that you may have to reduce your rates by three quarters of a point, half a percent, a quarter, those all translate and add up to thousands of dollars that you could be saving. Where it doesn't make sense is if reducing your rates and the amount of cost that's involved in that transaction, if it takes you longer than 48 months to clip those costs, then that's where you gotta kinda figure out, is this really a beneficial loan for you? You know, one of the, the fears that I also hear a lot of is, well, what happens to the years that I've already spent on my mortgage or the money that I've already been putting towards my balance? Do I lose all of that? And to the hands of that, it's no. This is part of your normal amortization. This also helps and allows you to be in a position to refinance simply because the amount of amortization or at least the amount that you've been paying down has added to the equity position that you're at. Now, if your biggest fear is going from a 30 year being two years into it and then refinancing into another 30 year, if you just can't see past that, there's plenty of options. You could always look at a 25 year, a 20 year, and even a 15 year. I also wanna remind you that you could take the savings on a new 30 year term and apply it towards that loan. In, in essence, writing yourself your own 25 year, 20 year mortgage, whatever the terms you see fit, you can do that when you refinance into a new 30 year mortgage. And if you guys have questions or elevated questions about that, please leave your comments below. I'll show you exactly how to find benefit in, in comparing today's interest rates in your current mortgage situation. So one of the bigger concerns for homeowners when it comes to refinancing during this whole coronavirus is cost. What is the cost associated with refinance? And it's very similar to a purchase, but it's a little bit more discounted because there's less people and less parties that are involved in that transaction. It's not to say that there aren't any costs and there's two different things that you can do really with costs. You can roll them into your loan amount, so therefore there's nothing coming out of pocket when you come to closing or if you wanna to try to keep your balance low, keep your mortgage limit low, then you're gonna bring that cost to closing. Things such as no points or zero closing cost programs, those are really stemmed from the interest rate. So buyer beware in that sense. If you're seeing something where there's a no point, that simply means that you have a higher interest rate than what you could qualify for. You always wanna look and find what's called the par rate, and that's right in the middle, where right where points where it would begin and also where a no point type of transaction would begin. That, that terminology is known as par, as close to zero as you can possibly get. So you wanna be careful that you get advertised with a no point loan. Yes, that may be attractive for the refinance purpose, but remember, you can roll in costs into your loan. So why take a higher interest rate that you're gonna be paying off 
30, 20, 15 years, whatever the term may be, that's interest, that's real money that you're gonna be spending that you can't get back. So it's wise to identify which program is going to offer a no point closing cost program and what's also going to offer an origination. Originations are going to be the same as your purchase, such as processing and underwriting. But if you are working with a lender that helped you with the purchase, chances are you're going to get a discount from them. So now that you know what's going on with cost, let's talk about the process. And in refinance, there's way less pressure than what it was like when you purchased the home. Obviously because you're already inside of the home. That's not to say that there isn't timetables or time constraints that are attached to that, such as rate locks, or maybe you have a debt that you need to pay off and there's a time constraint that's attached to that. Most refinances take two weeks, but with everything that's going on with the coronavirus right now, refinance applications are up through the roof right now. And most individuals, such as underwriting departments, closing departments, compliance departments, they're all working remote from different locations. So expect your turn times to be a little delayed. I'd say anywhere from three to five days. So a two week process, now it's probably gonna take about three weeks from start to finish. It's important to know that when you are in the middle of a refinance process, typically your only out of pocket expense should be for your appraisal. And that gets paid directly to an appraisal management company. So you wanna have the right expectations as far as part of the process, be prepared to pay an appraisal management company anywhere from 425 to about 480 for an appraisal. And yes, you do receive a copy of that. Also, it's important to mention, and it's not necessarily part of cost, but it's part of the process. When you refinance, they're gonna collect for a new escrow account. And more than likely on your existing mortgage, about 90% of homeowners have an escrow account that's attached to that mortgage, meaning they pay taxes and insurance as part of their total monthly payment. Well, that goes into an escrow account and that escrow account is refunded back to you as a homeowner. Uh, outside of that, hopefully you guys understand that point when it comes to the process of refinancing in today's market. So as I was mentioning before, the best type of mortgage you can have in a pandemic type of crisis market is a streamlined type of mortgage. So whether you're a VA holder or an FHA holder, you do have an option to reduce your rates and keep your costs at a minimum. So I highly implore you to look into a streamlined option during this coronavirus pandemic. Woo. I've probably cleaned this one spot at least like 15 times right now. So, uh, babe, just so you know, this whole area is highly disinfected. Let's try that again. Manage debt though. We're gonna try this for the umpteenth time. <laughs> but that actually should be it.